Should you be taking a zinc supplement for your skin, for your hair, and is zinc supplementation helpful for acne? We are going to get into all of that in this video, but before we do, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you like skincare content from a dermatologist. You're gonna to wanna to hit the bell notification too because that's going to let you know when my videos go live. Zinc is an essential metal ion. It does a ton of stuff for our body. It's vital for the function of a variety of enzymes that we need in order to live. It plays a key role in our immune system. It's vital for wound healing. It has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties that we need for good immune responses. There are a few situations in which zinc deficiency might arise. I have a video all about the skin signs of zinc deficiency, so definitely make sure you check that video out. I'm going to link it down below in the description box. But there is a genetic condition called acrodermatitis enteropathica in which babies are born with the inability to properly absorb zinc and they develop a very painful, uncomfortable dermatitis around the mouth, in the diaper area, they have diffuse hair loss. Adults can develop this as well in situations where they have low zinc in their diet, poor intake, or if you have an underlying medical condition that leads to poor zinc absorption, or maybe you have an underlying medical disease in which you have an increased demand for zinc. When people are struggling with the skin and hair signs of zinc deficiency, when they receive supplemental zinc, these things just melt away. Zinc supplements can be delivered by zinc sulfate or zinc gluconate. Zinc sulfate has about 23% elemental zinc, whereas zinc gluconate has about 14% elemental zinc. Zinc gluconate, while it has less elemental zinc, it's easier to tolerate on the digestive tract. Zinc sulfate also can leave a metallic kind of bitter taste in the mouth. Should people be taking zinc supplements for healthy hair growth just arbitrarily or if they're dealing with hair loss, is it a good idea to take zinc? The studies that we do have for hair loss are restricted to alopecia areata, which is a type of hair loss related to an autoimmune attack of the hair follicle, in which you get sudden patches of baldness. The natural history of the disease course, however, for the most part is one in which those bald patches, the hair regrows and goes back to normal. Those individuals can go on to develop bald patches in other locations. It can affect the eyebrows, the eyelashes, but in the majority of cases, the hair does regrow. That being said, there is there are some studies looking at zinc supplementation for this condition. A double-blind randomized control trial of zinc sulfate 220 milligrams twice a day for alopecia areata showed that while the zinc sulfate group did in fact have an increase in their uh, blood levels of zinc, there's no difference in terms of their alopecia areata. There's also an observational uncontrolled trial, meaning no placebo, looking at zinc gluconate 50 milligrams per day, 67% had uh, improvement while on zinc gluconate. And of those who improved, they had an increase in their blood levels of zinc. However, as I mentioned, you know, alopecia areata, the natural history of the disease, it can just spontaneously resolve and that's, that's oftentimes the case, so it's hard to say if it actually was the zinc or not. Suffice it to say, these studies are small and insufficient to go recommending zinc supplementation for alopecia areata, which is just one type of hair loss. Uh, there are many types of hair loss. The general public, because of marketing tactics largely, tends to lump hair loss into like one common issue when in reality it's many many different types of diseases and conditions i've talked about several different types of hair loss on this channel you have androgenetic alopecia which is pattern hair loss related to our hormones you also have telogen effluvium or hair shedding and then you have a type of telogen effluvium that we're seeing a lot lately related to having COVID. You also have autoimmune hair loss, alopecia areata, which we've talked about here, scarring hair loss, hair loss related to underlying autoimmune diseases, a condition called lichen plano pilaris. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So when somebody says, is this helpful for hair loss? The follow-up question always needs to be, what's the diagnosis? Because otherwise we're just saying, you know, a huge umbrella term for which there are a variety of different 
possible treatments, causes, etc. But all that to say, that's about it in terms of data for zinc supplementation for hair. You really can't, you really can't establish any firm conclusions based on these studies as to whether or not zinc supplementation is helpful for hair regrowth and any type of hair loss. What about zinc supplementation for our acne? Since the beginning of my channel, I always get questions about this. Is zinc supplementation a good treatment for acne? The research is really conflicting. There are about 12 studies all in all, each using different doses and different forms of zinc. Of the studies, six of them are actual randomized control trials. And of those randomized control trials, three randomized control trials actually do suggest that zinc supplementation does help with acne, whereas the other three randomized control trials showed no difference. The fact that there's inconsistent dosing, small sample size, it just makes it very challenging to draw any meaningful conclusions to the value of taking zinc supplementation. And it's not without harm. So we'll get into the side effects towards the end of the video, but that is why a doctor, a dermatologist, we're not just gonna say, oh yeah, take zinc, because the studies are conflicting as to if it worked or not. Can you imagine if this was a pharmaceutical drug that your insurance had to cover? They would never cover it, you know, it would never get approved with this kind of research. Now, a condition that we've talked about on this channel, I've got videos on, it's called hydradenitis superativa. I know a lot of you guys deal with it. It's miserable to live with. It's basically these bumps that come up, oftentimes under the arms or in the skin folds, I mean really anywhere. It's a disease of what is called the apocrine gland, which you have a lot of them in the underarm area. And basically you get these painful lumps uh, that then form sinus tracts that drain. I mean, it's really uncomfortable. Two small studies on 90 milligrams daily of zinc gluconate for hydradenitis superativa. One of the studies uh, is uncontrolled and the other one is retrospective. Uh, and in addition to oral zinc gluconate, they also were using topical triclosan 2%, which is an antimicrobial. Now, both of these studies actually did show some symptomatic improvement in patients with hydradenitis superativa who were treated with zinc. However, there were side effects, which we'll get into later on. But uh, again, very small, not a whole lot of research there, but I have gotten questions from time to time. What about zinc for hydradenitis superativa? Sure, there are these tiny studies suggesting that it may be helpful, but it's not enough to make a recommendation for taking zinc for hydradenitis superativa. What about wound healing? You know, zinc is so important for good wound healing. If you're gonna have a surgery, if you're planning to have a C-section and you want optimal healing, if you're gonna have an elective surgery, for example, or a cosmetic procedure, should you be taking zinc to optimize wound healing? Good question. All right, so there's a controlled study looking at uh, 20 men who underwent surgical removal of something called a pilonidal sinus. And these men were treated with zinc sulfate, 220 milligrams, three times a day. And it showed they healed faster. So promising, but tiny study, hard to say for sure if that's generalizable. Then there are some other studies actually looking at the healing of pressure ulcers. This is something that people who um, are not necessarily very mobile, maybe because of illness, a lot of times people living in nursing homes get afflicted with these and they're very challenging to treat and to heal. And there have been some studies looking at like nutritional supplements for healing these, uh, like dietary drinks that have a variety of minerals, protein, and zinc. And these studies do suggest that this nutritional drink, these nutritional drinks do help with faster, with better healing of pressure ulcers. Uh, they don't necessarily show any difference though in the nutritional drink with or without zinc. Suffice it to say, we actually need randomized control trials looking at zinc supplementation alone for wound healing uh, before you could go re making a recommendation to just take zinc. So why do we not just like go taking zinc supplementation? I mean, surely it's not harmful, right? Mm, not exactly. You definitely can have adverse effects to zinc supplementation. For sure, it can cause a lot of digestive upset. It can affect the levels of certain immune cells, cause what's referred to as a neutropenia, a leukopenia, you can get iron deficiency, copper deficiency. Taking supplemental zinc can actually interfere with copper absorption. So you can get copper deficiency and anemia. 
Uh, these are not good things. So this is why in the absence of good data to support a role for zinc supplementation for treating any of the conditions we've talked about, no germs is just gonna say, oh yeah, take zinc supplements. Even normal doses of zinc can cause some upset stomach, that's something that people complain about. And in the studies looking at zinc supplementation that we've gone over, a lot of the participants do report nausea. You can go get vomiting, diarrhea. In young children, you can actually have slowing down of growth as a result of too high levels of zinc. Even though it's important for growth, I mean, you can have too much of a good thing. It's kind of like Goldilocks. You've got to get it just right. And zinc supplements can interfere with your blood lipids and cause lipid abnormalities. Obviously, we use zinc supplementation to treat true zinc deficiency. So for acrodermatitis enteropathica, that genetic disease where you don't absorb zinc, we have to give very high doses to those patients. They lack the um, transporter to uptake it properly but you can kind of overcome that with very, very high doses. So they are given three milligrams of zinc per kilogram of body weight per day. For others with zinc deficiency who would otherwise absorb it properly, otherwise known as acquired zinc deficiency, anywhere from half to one milligram per kilogram of body weight per day is given. But it's not as though you just give the zinc and go on your merry way and wait for things to get better. There is monitoring that is required. The blood zinc levels are checked every three to six months and then the dose of the zinc supplement is lowered accordingly so that you're not giving unnecessarily high amounts. Then the copper levels may be, it may be necessary to check the copper levels, iron levels, and blood, you know, a full blood plant panel to make sure the adverse effects of neutropenia, neutropenia aren't developing. The goal of zinc replacement in people who have true zinc deficiency is to treat with the lowest effective dose so as to avoid these you know, potentially harmful side effects. So in summary, sure, there's some promising data looking at zinc supplementation for a variety of conditions, but all of the studies are so small, some of them show no difference. And taking zinc supplementation, it's not without harm. Uh, you can, again, develop these adverse effects. So that is why it's just not recommended to take a zinc supplement for healthy hair and healthy skin and otherwise healthy people who have no problem absorbing it. You should be able to get zinc from your diet. Now, people who are at risk for a diet that is maybe lower in zinc are people who follow a vegetarian or vegan diet because plant-based sources of zinc often contain something called phytates, which can actually lower the absorption of zinc. So if you follow one of those diets, you do have to be on top of your, you know, making sure that you're getting plenty of good sources of zinc. A very inexpensive clue to low levels of zinc is actually just the uh, alkaline phosphatase. It's commonly checked on like a liver function panel. Uh, that is a zinc dependent enzyme. And so if you have zinc deficiency, that will start to drop. All right, y'all, that's everything that I have to tell you about zinc supplementation for skin and hair. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put my video on the skin signs of zinc deficiency. So make sure you check that one out if you find this topic interesting. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.